Here's my uh, tube holder I came up with. And I used, uh, these are plumbing, a plumbing piece and an electrical piece. I'll show you that in a bit. And I just made a bracket. And that's out of a piece of a lawn chair, aluminum lawn chair. And I just put a couple pieces of wood there across the frame to mount the smell and everything. I got my heat pipes coming out the top. And since these uh, things are so short, you can just take your your exchanger and uh, just set it right on top of there. It turned out pretty good. Can't wait to test it. Okay, for my mounting, what I'm using is this right here. Now, it's actually two pieces. I was at the restore and I got a bunch of bunch of these but not enough and these are uh, electrical socket rings but I got them real cheap so these are heavy duty but what I found out is that the plumbing tube that has threads on it will actually screw down in there so you can make you a good little little holder on that and that's what I did on this one so all I do is stuff my tube down in there and I can stick this into there. It has a little slot for a screw. And you just tighten it up. And there you go. It's in there. Also today though I found you could use these metal ones. I found these at a Home Depot. A dollar something. And they also will fit with a with these fittings. They'll screw right in there. Like this. So that way you could you can mount it and have actually have two screws holding it. Okay, to build my uh, heat exchanger, here's what I'm using. I'm just using two T's and I'm using two of these uh nineties, but these are called street. One side's uh female and the other side's a male. And then I'm using since I'm just using a five chamber thing, I'm using five of these pipe to pipe. These have no stops in it. That means the pipe can slide slide right through there. And what you do is you take your your two T's and you put them together like that. You put it together like that. So there there you got your thing. And you hook it in with this pipe. Hook it in with that pipe. And there you have your basic you know, I'm going to cut it off because mine's not that big. But then these, for your heat exchanger, these will just slide down in between. Depends on how many, how many you have. Just like that. And then you just, you'll solder them, which will be the trickiest part. But that's all I'm going to do for my, uh, the heat exchanger. That's it. I got it all soldered, which was a bear. Then what happens? Your heat rod just slides up slides up in there and make contact. And I found out that um that these don't need to be that, that big. You really only need, you know, one and a quarter, no no bigger than two inch, it says. Which makes sense. So if I do another one it'll it'll be that. But anyways, I'm just gonna put it all together. This is what it looks like with my heat exchanger on top. Look good. This this will be my hot out. And what I did on this end, I did there. I'm gonna just get a piece of PVC to take it along, so they come both come out the same size. Pretty cool looking though, I think. Now this is a heat pipe that I made here, and basically there's just uh, four pieces to it. You got a an air chamber stub out here it's a half inch and then you have a half inch to a quarter inch reducer here then you have your quarter inch pipe which is the boiler pipe and then you just have a cap on the end or you could probably just pinch it off and solder it and also you can use a um, a baby nipple from a bottle and um, for uh, the seal on top of your uh, your glass 
tube. And anyways, that's all it is. You have a little bit of acetone inside there, and it it'll boil in the tube, and the vapors will rise up into the chamber here, and then be dissipated out onto your exchanger. Now the way I did my heat pipes is I squirt my acetone down in there, and you take your torch and you heat up the bottom the bottom chamber and you hold your finger over it until you feel the pressure. It would actually build pressure enough to push your finger off of there. And you just put your cap on there. And you solder it. And uh, one other thing they say to do is uh, get you some uh, stainless steel wool that you can buy at the do dollar store and just wrap your heat pipe in that. And then you just slide it down into your, um, your tube. Okay, before I even get my first one done, I'm already um, started a second one. And I'm just using a mirror, flat mirror right behind these and have the tubes spread apart a little bit. Probably about four inches from each center, but I think that'll work better. And I use the same, same plumbing fixtures and stuff up here. And I got my uh, heat pipe done. But also, on the heat pipe, instead of using the air chamber, um, I don't know if you can see that. My uncle in Michigan said he's going to make one, and he just used a penny and soldered it onto a, a piece of half-inch uh, pipe, and um, then you just grind it down on your grinder. And that seemed to work okay, and it's nice and short, where it doesn't really need to be that big. So I'm going to try that out and see how that works. And one other thing I did is um, I just took some of this foam... Uh, it has sticky on one side that you like put around your windows just to put around here and that way it fits it snug up in that two inch uh, plumbing piece and also you can put a little piece on the bottom or put it inside the fitting itself and and set it down in there. Okay, and the last thing I did for this I had a piece of uh, this is aluminum I'm just going to put some insulation in it and it's going to just set over top of it kind of like that to help hold some of the heat in. So hopefully everything's going to work good. I made a uh, slight modification on it. What I did is actually I put two rods, two heat pipes in each one and soldered. Let's see how that works. On my second one, I'm doing totally different here. I thought I could uh, do it differently. What I did is took the, um, the bullet in, stuck it up into a T, and just soldered everything together. So this this whole thing is actually just one big piece that just slides down in there. No sliding the rods up. And the rods are so the heads of the rods are up in the, each of the T's. So the water would have to make direct contact. I want to see how that works. So that way I have two different things to test. Just about ready to test. Okay, I have my little rig ups here set up today. It's supposed to be sunny, and this is the only part of my yard that's going to get any sun. And uh. When it there's a tree, but when it comes over there, it's a little bit of sky. That's what I get. But it should be enough to see what's going to happen here. And I got a temperature probe into the water. It's 72 degrees on that one. And this one over here. Well, I'm probably gonna be able to tell, but it's about. 70, looks about 78. And this is the one with the um, the double heat sensors in it. And this is the one with the uh, with the stub out straight up into the pipes that's making direct contact with the water. So I want to see how they do. Okay, they've been out here for a little over an hour. And uh, this one's reading. It looks about almost, yeah, I think it's about 109 or so. And this one, I 
That's 109. 109 too. So that's pretty good. Okay, it's been about four hours. I had to turn it around. It wasn't four hours of uh, full sun, but it was partly cloudy some other day. But this one is at 122.2 and the other one is and it's about the same one 122 so I could see if you got good sun and you had a bunch of these or the big long ones the longer ones that you get more uh, heat and stuff out of them you could really heat some water I'm hoping I can maybe make a little heater for the winter well anyways Thanks for watching.